Hey guys, welcome back to Python for Bioinformatics slash Computational Biology. This course has changed names a lot. <laughs> I've been having a, a crisis of conscience trying to figure out what to name it, so if I stumble, that's why. Um, we're going to learn Python in a computational biology setting. Um, and so in this video, we're going to go over errors. Um, we hate them, but if you learn to understand them, they can be very helpful in determining what is incorrect or wrong with your code. Um, so let's embrace them. Um, I had students that have taken um, both my R courses and at the end of my second R course, they would come up to me and they'd say, I don't know when, but at some point I learned what these mean. <laughs> so eventually you'll just see them enough because you'll make enough mistakes. That's how I learned. Um, you'll see them so much that you'll be like, okay, I know how to fix this because I've screwed up a lot. Um, and that's just the way it is. You're not gonna, you know, make the error once and then, you know, never make it again. It's just seeing them over and over again. Um, so without rambling too much, let's get in to it. Oh. Ugh. Let's change the name of this uh, video to uh, Errors. You can see it change in real time at the top here. Uh, that looks pretty good. Okay. First things first. Let's get to our location. Um, let me make sure that we don't need to be, what folder we need to be in. Okay, we don't have to be in our, you just have to be in your my files. Um, do not have to be in your work, your SWC uh, for this one. So I'm gonna save this uh, notebook as, and I'm just gonna call it uh, errors, save it. Um, okay, so um, let's put a little note here and say this code is an intentional error. You can type it directly or use it for reference to understand the error message below. Um, uh, let's put this on the next line, so you don't have to scroll to read what what's going on. So um, let's make a function. Favorite ice cream. Mine. Um, I, I really dig mint chocolate chip. Is that like an old person answer? Like I'm finding <laughs> that like, as I age, my answers, like I wouldn't say if my favorite can my favorite candy would be Werther's, like that's like the ultimate, you know, old person, at least for my generation. Maybe, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm just aging in uh, with the, the old stuff, but. Yeah, mint chocolate chip is pretty sweet. All right, uh, let's put our three, they picked the most generic ice creams, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. So it's like, if you want all three of them, the three flavors of Neapolitan. I've also heard it called something else, um, now that I'm in the South, but you know what I mean. All right, uh, so, You may have already spotted the error, or you may have not. So you define this function, favorite ice creams. You have ice creams equals chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Print ice creams, all three of them. Um, and then favorite ice creams. So you run it, and we get this error. Um, so traceback means um, 
that's kind of like the error debugging mechanism for Python. So what it's going to do is it's going to kind of go through each level to figure out where the error is. Um, and in this case, it has two levels. So um, you can kind of determine the number of error, uh, traceback levels that the error has based on the number of arrows here. So we have two, right? So we have this arrow and we have this arrow. Um, and so we got line, uh, no. so we have line 12. Um, my line numbers don't match. It depends on how you spaced yours. <laughs> but for me, uh, it's line 11, or line 12 and line 10. Um, so the last level is the actually, uh, so line 10 is uh, actually the place where the error, error occurred. Um, the other levels show what function the program executed to get down to the next level. Uh, so in, the, in this case, the program first performed a function call uh, to the function favorite ice cream, which you see here. So what it's saying is, okay, first things first, it called this favorite ice cream function, and that had a problem. Um, and then inside this function, where the problem uh, actually was relevant or where it actually threw, the error actually was created, was this um, line 10. Uh, so what did this program actually encounter? Um, in the last line of the traceback, Python helpfully tells us the category of the error. So down here it says index error, um, list index out of range. Um, and so if you encounter an error and don't know what it means, it's still important to read the traceback kind of closely. Um, that way, if you fix the error but encounter a new one, you can tell um, that the error changed, right? So um, what, what I'm saying is, right now, the error is this one, list index out of range. If we fix that, but we've made another error in a code, it might still show up pink. And you might be like, oh, that didn't fix it. Well, if the error changed, yes, you did fix that error, but there's two errors, right? This is just the first one we get to. Usually when you have one error, the first error that occurs stops the, the code from running. If there are more further down the line, then those don't get picked up by Python, by, by this error uh, mechanism, because the first one already stopped the code. So it's <clears throat> so for your benefit, it's, to, it's good to know, okay, this is an index error. If I fix the index error and then another one pops up and it says something, uh, some other sort of error, so undefined or something like that, then you know, okay, I fixed one error, but this is a different one. Um, instead of being like, well, that didn't fix it because you, you did fix it, you just have two errors. Okay. Um, so if you do encounter an error that you don't recognize, um, there is this official documentation on errors. Um, so docs.python.org um, and it's called uh, exceptions. So this will give you um, all the different errors, floating point error, module not, oops, module not found. So that's probably something where you didn't import something. Memory error. So if you, uh, you shouldn't have this problem on Praxis because we've given you like a really good amount of memory. Um, but if you're on this Python on your local computer, uh, like my laptop, uh, for instance, this desktop, pretty badass. My laptop is one foot in the grave. And I actually do get memory errors. I haven't run Python on it. I run R um, on it and I get memory errors because it's like, I'm not built for this. Please kill me. Uh, <laughs> my poor laptop. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. Uh, so that's where you can see errors. Um, so let's see. Mm -hmm. So let's look at some.
fix this one but we're not gonna fix it um, so let's keep going all right let's look at some uh, some syntax errors so um, when you forget a colon at the end of the line or accidentally add one space uh, too many when indenting under an if statement so remember Python super anal about how far you indent things right um, or if you forget uh, parentheses, when you need parentheses, uh, for example, you can see them kind of up here. Um, this is uh, a syntax error. This means that um, Python has rules for how you, how it reads code, right? And how it defines code. And that means you broke a rule, essentially. It says Python, this is a computer language, and I know computers are getting very smart, especially with this AI stuff, chat GPT, and, and um, stuff that we're actually going to implement sh sh into Praxis, uh, some AI help for you guys, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyways, uh, but Python's not that smart. <laughs> Python has a set of rules that it has to follow, and if you don't define or follow a set of rules when you write a code, um, it's like it doesn't understand. It'd be like you, me trying to, um, to writing you a letter or an email and then expecting if you're a non-foreign language speaker writing you an email in mostly English but then throwing in a couple words that are in Mandarin and you're like I don't what I don't follow this set of rules of, of how to communicate right so uh, you have to kind of follow the the unwritten rules for Python too they actually probably are written rules but anyways you get what I mean Okay, uh, so let's try one of these. Um, so we're gonna define some function and our message is going to say, hello world, very common generic uh, computer message. We're gonna print message and then we're gonna return message. So if we run this, phew, syntax error. Uh, what do we think has happened here? Um, let's try this, right? So this is a double error, uh, error one, right? So what you might notice is, and we kind of buried the lead because I talked about it in the, in the last thing. We have to put this semicolon here. So if you look up here, for our ice creams, we did put a semicolon, or sorry, a colon, not a semicolon. Uh, we, we did put a colon. So now if I hit it, this is where I said, make sure you read the errors, right? Because now we have an un, unexpected indent. At first, when we didn't have this, we had a invalid syntax. It means that our language that we used, we didn't, follow the rules of the language of Python and Python couldn't interpret it. We put the colon in and we fix that error, even though that's just why you have to pay attention. You'd be like, oh, they didn't fix it. No, it did fix it. We just have another error and it's this unexpected indent, right? And so compared to R, Python, super cranky about indents. We had one space too many here in this return message. Um, now if you run it, There it goes. <laughs> it, it runs it, even though it doesn't print anything out. But uh, that's our function. So if we ra if we ran something with the function, um, it would print out. But we're just not gonna bother. But yeah, so it runs good. Um, okay, now what? Um, so let's talk about some variable name errors. Um, so. This happens a lot. You get these, especially with indent or with capitalization. Um, this is where you you get this name error when you call a variable that doesn't exist, right? So if I say print a, 
and I run this, we get a name error. And that's because A, we didn't make an A, right? So it's, it's like, what do I print? You didn't ever made this thing, um, right? So a lot of times um, this is a capitalization, at least in my case, a capitalization or, or spelling, like typing mistake. You've seen how many typos I have. Um, so if you've typed something slightly different than what you saved the variable as, or if you've capitalized something um, as the variable name and then left it lowercase when you called it or vice versa, um, then it's gonna throw this name error. error. Um, another thing is if you do something like this, print hello, um, we're gonna get this name error because even though we want it just to print the words hello, we can't say, we have to put quotation marks, right? Because it thinks with the rules of Python, it thinks that hello is the name of the variable we saved and it's not saved anywhere. But if we put quotation marks around it, then it says, oh, okay, I just you just want me to print whatever, you know, this quote, which is hello. Um, so what else? Okay, um, let's do this loop uh, for a number in range of 10. Oh. Uh, colon, and we're gonna say count equals count plus plus number. And then we're gonna print the count is count. So this says, again, the name error, count is not defined. And so the problem with this is that we have an initialized count. Um, so we say count is co equals count plus whatever our number is. Well, the problem is we're saying to look for count and then add a number to it, right? And that's the new count. Well, count hasn't, we, we don't have an initial starting point. So if count originally was 50 and that equals 50 plus what our, our, our number is, so like one, it would be 51. But we don't know what the starting point is, right, for count. So what we, all we have to do is just initialize it. So um, we're gonna say count equal, well, let's do this, count equals zero. So, okay, we've initialized count. If we run it, up, oh, count is not defined. Capitalization, I gotcha on it, maybe, probably not. All right, <laughs> so let's lowercase it. There we go, so count is 45. Uh, if we run it again, uh, oh, it's still just gonna give me 45. Um, so there you go, so, like, so you have to initialize this. So sometimes uh, if it's in a loop like that or in a function, it doesn't understand because you haven't initialized it. Um, okay, let's look up, let's do this uh, index errors quick. Um, so sometimes they have to do with containers or things that hold values like lists and strings um, and the items within them. Um, if you try to access an item in a list or a string that doesn't exist, then you'll get this error. Um, so let's say we do letters equals, I'm uh, gonna we'll say A, B, and C. All right, and then we're gonna print, uh, letter number one is, and now we're gonna say letters, and remember this stupid Python syntax, <laughs> the first one in our list is zero. I don't understand that. Uh, letter number two is, and then letters two, nope, sorry, one is number two, print, Letter number three is, what's going on here? What's going on here? All right, there we go. Letters three. And then let's do print, dun, dun, dun. Letter number four, which doesn't exist. Uh, and then we say 
letters for. So let's run. Why did it stop it? Wait, 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 wait. Um. Hmm. It's weird that it didn't print three before that problem existed. So as you can see, uh, wait, wait. What is going on? Why is it telling me letter three doesn't exist? Uh, weird. Did I spell something? Am I missing some spelling mistake here? Print letter number three is letters. Oh, this should be two. Duh. See, this is my R brain coming back. I shouldn't even say Arby, it's a normal brain. Python, get your ass together. All right, there we go. So letter one, two, three is A, B, and C. And then when we try to call letter number four, it doesn't exist. So we get this uh, index is out of range uh, error, right? Um, so an easy fix. I'm just gonna hash it out, right? And then run it, and it runs just fine. Um, okay, file errors. So last type of error that we'll cover today are those associated with reading and writing files. Um, if you try to read a file that does not exist, you'll receive a file not found error. You've probably gotten this if you aren't in the right working directory and you're trying to load stuff in this class, uh, for you Praxis people at least. Um, if, you intend, or if you attempt to write a file that was opened read only, Python, Python will return an unsupported operation error. So sometimes you can try to open an error that is designated that you can't write to it. You can only read it, right? Um, it's kind of like a, how PDF files used to be. Now you can kind of write them, but it used to be that you could only look at them and you could like save them on them, you know? So let's do this. File handle equals open my file.txt r. Okay, so what it says is no such file directory. There is no myfile.txt. Um, so one reason for receiving this error is that you spec uh, specified an incorrect path to the file. For example, if I'm in my folder called my project and I have the file in my project slash writing slash data slash whatever, then it's not, it doesn't, Python isn't like, going to search your whole computer for this file. It's only gonna look where you're working. Right now, we're in this desktop classroom, my files, right? So it's only gonna look in here. If it's not in here, it's not gonna look in, it's lazy. It's not gonna be like, oh, maybe they meant it to be in this folder. No, it's not gonna do extra work. It's like a college student, right? <laughs> so, uh, so it's only gonna look there. Um, and so if you are, for example, if you're like, oh, it's in, what was the other um, software carpentry data? If it's in a different directory, you have to specify what that different directory is. Um, so you'd have to do something like this and give it the full file path. Um, so in R, this R option just means for reading, right? So it's opening it for reading. Um, but um, if you meant to open a file um, for writing, so if we change this to .w, and then we say file handle read, <coughs> you'll get a different error, right? It'll say it's not readable. Um, or, uh, yeah, not readable. So if we got rid of this and we said what our file handle was, uh, you see that it runs. So the error is um, that we opened a file um, with the right execution um, and then 
gave it another designation for it to be uh, the read execution so that I kind of get it. Um, got it confused, I guess. Oh, okay, and that is it. That's where we're gonna stop. So I'm gonna save it. Um, so for you Praxis people, if you want to, for you Praxis people, your final project um, is gonna be to create this portfolio of all the stuff that you learned. Don't include this one because it's because it's throwing all these errors and we didn't fix them all. Um, it's it's just not it's gonna screw up. You know it's not gonna be able to run all your code because these are gonna throw errors and stop your code. So don't worry about including this one. Just keep it at the, um, as this errors.python notebook thing, um, and and we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, it's a good thing to know, um, but don't include it in your uh, final project portfolio, right? Um, so. That's it for errors, just kind of uh, some of the simple ones of, of what is um, being thrown when you um, are writing and you'll learn to understand what they mean. Um, yeah, it's they're pretty intuitive. It's nice that it shows you like where they are in the code and, and things like that. They're a little more intuitive than our errors. I think our errors are a little more nebulous um, than, than Python errors. So, all right, with that, thanks for watching. You know the drill if you're on YouTube. Hit like, hit subscribe, um, tell a friend. Let's get everybody learning this stuff because uh, it's very helpful. You can use it in all sorts of aspects of your life. I do wanna make a video. So I'm actually, um, right now I'm building, um, long story short, I'm building a growth chamber in my garage um, and I have Raspberry Pis running. Um, the humidity and temperature and carbon dioxide measurements and things like that. It's all written in Python, all the code um, to control these uh, environmental conditions in my growth chamber, which is pretty cool. Um, so maybe I'll make a video on that and show you just different ways you can use Python besides bioinformatics, um, including tinkering, uh, as they say. Um, but yeah, you can do all sorts of stuff with it, so learn it, it's cool. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.